Good morning, folks. Let's begin with that filament eruption we didn't get to properly finish watching yesterday morning. We do have a full slate of news here, and we'll start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find another calm day. We don't see much in terms of sunspots at the incoming region, but there is an equatorial coronal hole that will be noteworthy for the upcoming week. The solar wind dropped intensity as we entered the weekend. It already wasn't much of a stream, and so geomagnetic conditions are calm and quiet. Top quake of the last day continued not only the string of larger rumbles in this uptick, but they're striking the deep, over 400 kilometers down on this one. The monsoon has finally made it to parts of India, although one might question the benefit of ending your mega drought with a devastating flood. That's expected to continue. Top alerts tonight come to central Canada and just down into the states as well, with thunderstorms and possibly tornadoes and major hail, coming here and also to Japan. Strong system west near the coast, tossing major storms across the Sea of Japan all day. While the two stratospheric volcanic injections this week are globally relevant, neither is as surprising as a woman in New Zealand finding a mud volcano growing in her backyard. At first she thought last night's barbecue had gotten way out of control, then she realized, nope, that's a mud volcano. So we are four days until the eclipse, this is a show mostly for the South Americas. Here is the official expected track and visibility range and times. Video is linked below, as well as this one here. This is Dragonfly. The plan is to drop her down into the Titan atmosphere and expressly, officially, search for signs of life. The craft will combine thruster, shoot, and drone-like rotor propulsion to land safely and then fly around looking at a few different kinds of potential habitats for alien microbes. Now or in the past. Up next, it's M98, a relatively tame-looking galaxy but with trillions of stars. Huge, glaring dust content and even plumes and rings as though from a burst long ago. Today, Hubble's infrared component pierces the dusty, glaring veil down into the core for the best look ever, and it looks exactly like what you'd expect. It almost wouldn't be a proper start to the weekend without a new constraint on dark matter. At least this time they weren't looking for supermassive particles, but alas, still no sub-GEV dark matter discovered either. And for those newer to our cosmological examinations, the current paradigm has both expansion and the cosmic microwave background, but they don't agree with each other. The major tension grows stronger today in a clear sign of a needed change to the grand paradigm. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. It is Saturday, so website members will have our Fly on the Wall podcast around lunch today. August Dunning is indeed going to be joining us, and if you missed our second upload together last night, check it out. It is linked below as well. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.